Welcome back to the channel. This will be part six of the S62 swap into my E46. In today's video, I want to show you the cooling system in which I have put together for this project. The primary objective here was to use parts that I had here at the shop, meaning this system is going to use a lot of BMW original parts. I'm going to dismantle all of the parts and then we will discuss and install them piece by piece so you can see how they all work together. Starting off with the radiator itself, this is from a E83 X3 car that had the M54 engine. Now, the reason why I chose this was I had a parts car here, which happened to be an X3, and I seen this radiator and stuff. I was like, you know what? That might come in handy in the future. So I kept a hold of it, not only because it uses E46 mounting brackets, there's also other features of this radiator that made me choose it. Directly in front of the X3 radiator, we now have one from an E46. Now, as you can see, the X3 one is taller. That is because I believe there was eight more cooling tubes within the core for the X3 one. Because this coming from an SUV, BMW wanted a stronger cooling system for the engine. Although it appears taller this way, whenever this is mounted to the car, this height difference is used at the bottom. So if you look, you can see the mount for the 46 is here while the X3 is up here. Now, that may seem worrying that you lose that much ground clearance. However, with E46, there's still plenty of room. What's pretty cool is the oil pan that I use for this swap, it is pretty much flush. Bottom of the pan to the bottom of the radiator whenever it's mounted to the car. So realistically, I did not lose ground clearance as my oil pan is already that low now. Moving this aside, you can now see the power steering cooler of this X3, which I really enjoy compared to the stock E46, which appears like this. If you ask me, there isn't much cooling efficiency going on here. So we get rid of this for this nice X3 one, which also uses the same exact location for the quick connect hoses for the power steering system. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to this cooler, it was a limited release and it was updated to a different part very early on. So finding this exact cooler is pretty hard to find. And now we come to the back side, where we have this large cooling fan, which is pretty huge compared to the original E46 one. I'm going to show you what I did to gain more clearance for the engine. So here is one of the mounting brackets that is used for the radiator on X3 and the E46. This rubber foot down here rests directly into the mount on the body, and then it gets fastened up here to the radiator. The radiator itself, it rests in the bracket down here in this little V cutout. There's a foot on the bottom of the radiator that it kind of rests into. Now I had to gain roughly an inch and a half clearance towards the front of the car to fit the S62. So here's my modified bracket. As you can see, I chopped off this piece that was once here. I also had to make a little foot bracket down here. So you can see I have it bolted to the bracket. Here is the relocated foot. As you can see with the side-by-side -side comparison, how much more forward the radiator will be in the car compared to that. It's like a I think it was like an inch and a half more, I believe it was. Now the modified mounting bracket will rest right in there like that. I now have this bracket right against this frame rail. Also, at the very top of this bracket, I put this bolt in here with a nylon lock washer to act as a movement limiter. These set bolts will directly contact the mounting screw, which will limit the radiator movement backwards. And now we're going to discuss the expansion tank. I was online searching for random coolant tanks and a picture of this thing popped up and I figured it would work. So I decided to buy it and try it out and I'm very happy with how it fits in the car. Okay, so the tank itself is actually made for a Mini Cooper. Now this one is actually a aftermarket variant. The original factory one, there's a couple of things I didn't like about it. Being it was plastic, it did not have this overflow or vent port. And it also did not use a traditional style cap 
flange. The reason why I like the traditional style cap flange is it allows me to try different rated pressures. And I also really enjoy the overflow because the M3 and M5, they have an overflow style cooling system. Okay, so I actually like that idea versus a totally sealed system. Another thing is the capacity of this is roughly one and a half liters, which is similar to both the M5 and the M3 expansion tanks. We have this port on the bottom, which will be used for the expansion and also the feed to the water pump. We have this port here, which will be used as a return, like the E46 M3. I'll derive this from the upper radiator hose. I have mounted it to the car with this bracket that I made out of aluminum. Although this assembly looks beefy, this entire piece weighs less than a non-M E46 expansion tank. Now with the tank installed, you can see that I used existing spots. There are studs down here in the body. I used two of those here and here, and I used one of the holes up here for the core support. The bracket itself, I had to make a few revisions. At first, I had three simple pieces of metal. I had two legs and this top piece. It was way too flimsy for my liking. So what I did was I doubled up the metal right here. I, as you can see, I have two pieces of aluminum riveted together on both legs. I then added this cross joist here, which prevents twisting of the tank as you're checking the coolant level. And then these back straps here, we'll call them back straps, I guess. They come up and they do a hard 90 to the very bottom. That prevents the tank from being pushed down to the left. We then have this piece branching off here, which is directly against the tank, giving it extra stability. Then it ties directly to the very top bracket. The entire bracket is all one piece. It has all been riveted together while leaving the tank itself a bolt-on item here, back there, and up here. So now, if need be, the reservoir itself can be removed. It is now time to discuss my hose. I mean, uh, hoses. It is time to discuss my hoses. Starting off with this pair right here. This section right here goes directly to the water pump. This was original to the M5. I cut off this section for the hard angles, which you'll see why here in a second. I then put this coupler from a E46, also found an E60, which is where I got this one. Put it directly into the hose, clamped it in, which will then snap onto this hose right here which is a reducer. We had to downsize from this roughly one inch hose to a 5 8 hose. Using this coupler right here, which was from an E60 5 series, I put it into this 5 8 hose, clamped it on. Then this 90 degree part goes to the bottom of the tank. They snap directly together like that. And here we are with the port of the water pump I was talking about. What goes on to it is the hose that was made using, the, once again, the M5 hose with the E60 coupler, also found in various BMW models. With the hose installed, you can see how it deviates away and gives plenty of room back in here. Then we'll take this hose, put it on the bottom of the tank. I have this holder right here, which bolts directly to the engine via one of the Vanos assembly bolts. Now these two will go directly together, just like that. Up next we have the upper radiator hose. It was made using the original M5 hose that I cut down and put in this E46 coupler. This port right here on the M3 is used as a return port to the expansion tank. That is what I'm doing with it. So I made this little fitting right here. I cut this section off of this expansion tank. You see how this chunk here is missing? That is where this port was. After that, I threaded in this brass barb right here. We now take this piece and snap it into the hose. The location for this hose will be right here onto the thermostat housing. Like that. Next up, we have this return hose, which leaves the upper radiator hose and goes directly to the expansion tank. 
we have this little barbed connector here to conjoin the two different hose sizes. Now we take this side, put it directly onto the barb, like that. The other end of the hose then goes onto the expansion tank, just like that. Finally, we have the last hose. This is a unmodified M5 hose, which goes right here. Now that we have all the hoses installed, we can install the radiator assembly. We can now install the core support assembly. I had to cut this piece out of the core support to fit the power steering cooler. Originally, this cooler was behind the core support. But as you can see, just how much I had to move the assembly forward to make it fit. It is much more open now for increased airflow. Here is the upper hose along with its return hose, which goes up across the radiator and goes to the expansion tank, just like how the M3 has their return hose routed. And we have the water pump feed and expansion hose from the bottom of the reservoir directly to the water pump, just like the M5 is. Now right here is where the set screws go to hold the radiator in place. If you look down inside, you will see those set bolts which I have. Once again, those will help limit the movement backwards towards the engine. Once I installed my modified set screws, the radiator will stay put probably about right there. One more thing, the plug for the cooling fan is different. It is specific. I stole this also from an E60 which will plug right in. Just like that. When it comes to the cooling system, it appears that this puzzle is complete. And there we go. Cooling system, cross it off the list. If you're curious as to why I'm not working on the engine to get it to fire up, that's simple. I know the engine's good. I have the wiring for the first start already all figured out. That was actually pretty easy. I wanted to move on to the more difficult things, which for me, potentially was a cooling system. Thankfully, I had parts cars at my disposal to try random things. And yes, I am going to show you the wiring process of how to get this engine running in this chassis. Just because I already figured it out doesn't mean I'm not going to show you. I definitely am because that's a very important thing, obviously. As far as part 7, what should it be? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure yet. Gonna have to wait and find out, I guess. Part 7, I'll see you guys there. Catch you later.